I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times. Monday, November the 10th. News in Arkansas today. This morning, Martha Schaffner, the former Democratic treasurer of the state of Arkansas, was to appear in federal court, expected to plead guilty to a second set of charges arising out of her indictment for public corruption. Today, she was supposed to answer a charge that she had used a, a, a credit card to pay for personal expenses out of campaign money. When she began to be questioned by the judge, we had a repeat of something happened the first time she appeared in court on an earlier set of charges. She wouldn't answer fully, yes, I admit to a crime in these matters. I think what she said was, is I'm not ready to say that I knew I was going to take campaign money and spend it on personal expenses, although she doesn't deny that that's what she did. On that, the judge said, I can't accept the plea, so she's going to go to trial in three weeks. The net effect of all of this is she's been convicted once on a group of 14 charges this current trial could have been reduced to one charge. It might lead to multiple convictions. A 70-year-old woman faces perhaps 15 to 20 charges, each with a penalty of as much as 20 years. She may be facing the rest of her life in prison as a result of some very inartful answers at plea, plea hearings. Next, uh, state government. I think the most interesting development this week is seeing the state come to grips with the surprise passage of, in, of Issue 3. This was the amendment that loosened term limits that uh, establish an independent commission that can raise the pay of legislators, state officials, and judges, and which also imposed some new ethics rules. Already, because it took effect the day after the election, already lobbyists have been crimped in their normal practice of taking legislators out to lunch. I'm watching very closely this independent pay commission. The, it's going to be appointed by the governor, the House Speaker, the Senate President, and the Chief Justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court. In its first year, it can put an unlimited pay raise in effect. It, in future years, it'll be limited to 15 percent. I hope they approach this rationally, but I'm sure legislators are going to appoint people that they think will do right by them on this independent commission. There is still a lawsuit pending on this, and it could yet be removed from the ballot. I'd be very surprised the Arkansas Supreme Court removed something just approved by voters, but you never know. I think an illustration of what state government faces in the next couple of years ahead under, under what's going to be a radically different shape of government with Republican control was a news release today from the Arkansas Advocates for Children and Families. This has been a long-time advocate for the needs of working people. It's published a study today that said an earned income tax credit on the state level, a percentage of the one given at the federal level, could provide an immense benefit in, in helping working families get by. It's a good idea. It's earned income tax credit is something that even conservatives are known to favor. There's just not room in the budget to do it in Arkansas. And Asa Hutchinson, during his gubernatorial campaign, said that while he favored a big income tax cut, he thought people on the lower end of the spectrum already had enough tax favoritism, even though as Arkansas Advocate shows people on the low end of the scale pay a much bigger percentage of their income in taxes than those on the high end do. With the election over this year, the presidential election in 2016 has already begun. I notice already if there could be possibly even more abuse being heaped on Hillary Clinton by our opponents in the Republican Party. It seems to be stepped up even more today. There was this interesting development. Uh, over the weekend, Fox News and Ben Carson announced that Ben Carson, who's a conservative doctor, uh, from in Maryland was going to no longer be a Fox News contributor because he's clearly making plans to run for president. This prompted Howard Kurtz, a nationally known media critic and a, himself a, a contributor to Fox News, to say Fox needed to make a decision soon on Mike Huckabee, who's been going around the country talking quite openly about his interest in running for president again. This is one of the real problems that Mike Huckabee faces, is keeping the money from that Fox News show, which is a big part of his income, while also running for president. You can't do both. You probably shouldn't do both. Once again, I, I'd urge viewers to take a look back at the Arkansas blog, arkansasblog.com, for lots of interesting items that have piled up over the weekend. There's just a smashing video from John Oliver, HBO, who does one of the best takedowns of state lotteries I've ever seen. They're mathematically crazy. You're a fool if you think you're going to get a big winner on them. They don't help education. They prey on addicts. Uh, altogether a bad thing. Arkansas faces what to do about its uh, staggering lottery, and I, I don't think that it likely can come up with a new way to, to invent the wheel to, to have an experience any different here than other states, but it's, it's worth considering his video in light of our own problems. Also, I ask you to take a look up for a, a great item over the weekend about a former Arkansan, Tom Butt, who uh, led a progressive challenge and elected a slate of progressives to the city council with Tom Butt as mayor in Richmond, California. This was a fight against Chevron Oil, which has a company town there, runs a big refinery. 
Tom Butts group spent, I think, $50,000. Chevron Oil spent $3 million, and they got beat. Wonderful story. <coughs> Excuse me. Finally, tonight, the, Ar uh, the Little Rock City Board is going to take up Uber, the ride-sharing service which decided to start operating last week without a city permit. I think the city board was well inclined to, to adopt a regulatory scheme for Uber, but they're very unhappy that the company has gone ahead and started operating uh, without a permit. This perhaps means the final regulatory ordinance might be a little tougher on Uber than Uber had wanted. I hope that's the case. I, I hate to see these guys run roughshod over city government. Also tonight on the city board's agenda, at least for placement for discussion next week, it looks like the city board is going to get rid of pot-bellied pet pigs in the city, and it has people who read our Facebook page simply up in arms. Woo Pig Suey, I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.